Good morning, everyone. My name is Julian, and um, welcome to our devotional this morning at Christ Central in Redhill. This morning, I'm going to be continuing our series through Mark, and I'll sit up a bit so I don't disappear completely off the screen. And we're going to continue in Mark chapter 2, reading from verse 23. So we're thinking about early stories of, of Jesus and with some of his followers. So here we go. One Sabbath, he, Jesus, was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, have you never read what David did? When he was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God in the time of Abithar, the high priest, and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he also gave it to those who were with him. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath. There we go. So we're going to ask God to help us understand this passage, to bring us a new revelation. Then I'm going to give you some reflections on the passage, and then we'll be breaking into a time of prayer as normal afterwards. So let's pray. Father God, thank you for this beautiful day. Father God, as the world around us is, uh, is going back to work, getting ready to go back to work and having the rules change, we've come together to focus on you this morning. We're saying yesterday, today, tomorrow. Father, please can you give us a new revelation today of your word, what you're saying to us, and, uh, and what you would like this world to be like. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So, what we're going to do this morning is we'll break it into little sections. We're going to think about what was the Sabbath, so you've got a little bit of background to the story. And then we're going to think about what David did, so we've got a bit more of an understanding of, of what the Pharisees' criticism was. Then we're going to think about, well, what, G what did Jesus say and what did that all mean? And then finally a little bit of well, what does that mean for us? So the Sabbath. In Genesis 2, we read that God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, God rested from his work that he had done in creation. So we've had Genesis 1, God has had days and there's evening, morning, another day. God's gradually made the earth and then the Sabbath day comes. Interestingly, reading about it, I only realised yesterday that it doesn't talk about evening and morning on the seventh day. It just says that God rested. And then in Exodus 20, tying in almost with what we're studying on Sunday morning, so a quick plug for Sunday morning services, search for Christ Central Red Hill on YouTube at 10 o'clock on the Sunday. The Ten Commandments, now commandment number four. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Lord blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. So God set aside one day in seven to be holy. So a quick search of Wikipedia tells you that there are three main reasons for the Jewish Sabbath. So the first one is to commemorate God's creation of the universe, as recorded in Genesis 2. The second one is to commemorate the redemption from slavery in Egypt, because you remember that the, uh, the whole thing about Exodus, the leaving, the mass leaving, was escaping from the uh, from the slavery in Egypt where they were and moving towards the promised land. And then the third reason given is as a taste of the Messianic age, which is still to come for the Jewish law. So to keep something holy is a bit of a vague term. So there are activities that are prohibited. So you, you're avoiding certain forms of deliberate activity including sowing, reaping, threshing and winnowing, um, lighting fires, putting out fires, writing more than two letters, that kind of stuff. There are many commandments altogether. Um, and if you'd like to do a more in-depth study of the, of the Old Testament rules, then, then go for it. But right now, we're just thinking about how we're keeping the Sabbath holy. So, yes, so these activities are prohibited. Um, so it's rather than avoidance of work, it's avoidance of deliberate forms of activity. So hold that thought at the moment about the um, sowing, reaping, threshing or winnowing. But think a bit now about what David did. So in 1 Samuel 21, we read how when David was on the run from Saul, he went to the temple. 
He um, told the priests that his men were all ritually clean because they were on the king's business, which frankly was a lie. Um, and the priest said, I'm really sorry, there's no common bread that I can give to the poor. But because you're all ritually clean, I can, um, and this is really stretching the rules, you're allowed to have the bread of the presence, which is the 12 loaves that sit in the Holy of Holies um, that the priests themselves are only allowed to eat. So what the priest did is he, he bent the rules, broke the rules, so that the hungry people could have food, in short. So Jesus is walking through the fields, and, um, and his disciples, probably hungry, are taking corn and um, processing it in their hands and then eating the grains, which is against these rules of what can be done on the Sabbath. Um, and the Pharisees are saying, well, that, that, you can't do that, that's work. So Jesus reminds them of, of what happened to David and Agatha, and the ESV writes, Jesus endorsed the priest's decision putting mercy towards David and his men over ceremonial law. So there are bits in the Old Testament that say, well, the poor can um, take from their neighbor's crops so they can't starve. And looking at the Old Testament law, there are various rules towards um, giving each other's debts and helping out other Israelites, which are stationed all through the law to, to keep the nation um, in, in line with what God would want. But here we have, they're taking ears of corn and they're, they're feeding themselves. So Jesus appears to be saying, it's all right having all these rules, but you need actually to think about when you're applying them and, and what the effect actually is. So as Al has said a number of times, what does love look like in this situation? It's not just a black and white, this is the rule, this is the interpretation, it's a, this is the rule, but, or as the bracelets used to say, what would Jesus do? So we're not supposed to be confined by our Sabbath and our Sabbath rules. The Sabbath is a gift from God to us. God's blessed the seventh day and made it holy, set apart for him, for spiritual and physical regeneration. And if we think Mark's gospel is all about having that relationship with Jesus, it's encouraging us towards a relationship with Jesus. It's not just following rules. So there's a, there's a follow on here that says, well, if the Sabbath is made for man, that's us. And Jesus, as the Son of Man, is over us, therefore he's also Lord of the Sabbath. But there's also a thinking about balancing up with the following of rules and free reign and license, which is something that Ian touched upon yesterday. So if, if you're falling off the horse, for want of a better expression, are you going to lean towards... Um, implementation of rules and regulations which are relatively straightforward to say but can be very condemnatory or are you going to lean towards license and, and free will and doing whatever you want and we're, we're called to, to walk, a, walk quite a line here between well doing what is right with God so I think um, I think this morning we're going to reflect a bit upon rules are relatively easy especially if they're they're um, you know either right or wrong but relationships can be difficult because it's it's working with another person you might make a mistake and you might misinterpret stuff so they they take a bit more work so as i said do we choose the path of legalism do we choose the path of license or do we try and walk that straight and narrow path down the middle where is it we're going <laughs>